happy fucking Wednesday. That's right, you cocksucking losers. It's another edition of Christy Unleashed, and I am your host, Christy Miller, and you are in for a great fucked up show where we take page six and make it page 666 because we are evil as fuck. <laughs> and with me, as always, my ride or die, my Thelma to my Louise is the one and only Mark Riccadonna. I'm so happy to be here. You're the best. And we got a great week. I mean, geez, how much, I mean, we'd never get disappointed by our page six news. No, if we did, we wouldn't have a show. I would probably die. I would die without page six. <laughs> this is page six with the word fuck in it. <laughs> this is page 666. <laughs> the number of the beast. We should, play, we should ask Iron Maiden if we could have that theme song. <laughs> Excuse me, Bruce Dickinson. Yes, the Bruce Dickinson. Uh, we promise to put more cowbell in it if you let us use your song. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Bruce Dickinson. Hey, isn't that... Uh... <laughs> I like to put my dick in, son. Put your dick in, son. That's telling someone what to do, player. What? <laughs> His name is not just a name. It's also instructions. <laughs> hey <-o. laughs> That one gets a Golden Girls. Ooh. <laughs> that's a B. Arthur shade. Oh, can... the, that's the full cast. Who I got throws this... more shade, B or uh, Sophia? B. Arthur. Yeah. I'm B. Arthur. Queen. No, I'm B. Arthur. If they She's remade the, the Golden Girls, I'm B. Arthur. Hey, who ordered the man in a dress? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely Betty White because I'm dumb as a fucking box of rocks. Very true. And Richie Byrne is Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> Just because he has constant problems with his BMs. Well, that and the fact that he tells the the funniest stories from back in the day. Picture yeah. it. Sicily, 1932. <laughs> <laughs> Picture it. Staten Island, 1989. <laughs> there I was with my mullet and my trans ham. <laughs> I had a 32-inch waist and women were fawning over me. Were they, though? <laughs> <laughs> And Rob Bartlett is <laughs> Blanche Devereaux. You know, I, I do declare. <laughs> <laughs> I, I refuse to be treated in such way. You ever find your underwear in the backseat of a car? Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> By 35-year-old Blanche Devereaux. Well, twice. <laughs> well, you know I would have anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest show on earth, Golden Girls. Ah. Uh, Speaking of old fucking cunts that need to come back from the dead, should we kick this show off? <laughs> I think it's a go. All right, you cocksucking motherfuckers. It is that time. It's time to pour the Celebra Tea. All right, you dirt bags, let's pour this tea. All right. Oh, this is a good one. Yep. The zombie apocalypse has arrived, people. Kate Quigley <laughs> says, I've decided that life must go on after a suspected group overdose that killed three people. This bitch did not waste any time going, well, whatever, life goes on. I got to live. I can't. She I jumped can't. right in. So I wonder if th this is going to get her some followers. Oh, I'm sure. That's what, it, it's what everybody wants, right? Exactly. Well, her publicist has been milking this shit. Milking. That's it's like poor Kate, like Kate's in the hospital. She can't walk. She's sick. She, she's recovering. And oh, thanks, everybody. I'm going to take time off of, in, you know, in, you know uh, social media so I could get things together and, and, and really deal with what happened. And then the next day, I am better every day 
and Speaking I'm of addiction. Going, yeah, right? <laughs> Not only am I snorting fentanyl, I'm logging into it. Hey! <laughs> Twitter is the fentanyl of social media. Oh my God. And her fucking first tweet back is, I was going to bake from social, but honestly, I'm in a great mood today because three people are dead. Yeah! That needs three more spots for me. You fucking cunt. And she said, I'm so excited. <laughs> about the Rams NFL kickoff game, and I've decided that life must go on. Well, fuck you, Los Angeles Rams, for fucking helping her decide life goes on. <laughs> you know How who dare else? you be the suicide prevention? Right? And she goes, "Not no use in not living when I'm lucky enough to be alive. Life goes on. Yeah, you know who else said life goes on? Corky. Hey, uh... <laughs> I can't. This bitch needs to go. I've heard this... nothing but nice things about her from uh, she's originally from Akron and uh, we play that we mutually play that club there in Cuyahoga Falls. I've heard nothing but nice things, but this is sad. It's really sad. And I've heard a lot of nice things about her, too. And I, I didn't know Fuquan like I didn't hang with him, but we knew each other. Yeah, but I didn't like hang with him. You know, I'm not a part, you know, it's, it, I didn't, but I knew him. Yeah. But I wasn't friends with him like that. Like a lot of my friends were friends with him. Like my LA friends like rolled with him and stuff. And yeah, that's the I, biggest, that's the big loss. And I don't know. It's all a loss. A it's all a waste. It's a waste. It's such a waste. And uh, Darius Rucker. <laughs> hey, cause Kate loves a little hootie and the blowfish <laughs> she put the blow and blowfish <laughs> but he says because everybody wants to know what darius rucker has to say he I, says i mean kind of on every subject i'm interested right to what the darius has to say Exactly. And he says that his ex, Kate Quigley, is doing great after her overdose. So, you know, because they knew that they dated briefly. So let's 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 translate that they were fucking and that ended. And then they found pictures of them on Instagram because, you know, the gossip brags and everybody loves the tea and the investigation so they all contacted him so he's like she's doing great and all this shit well she clapped back about well um stop talking about me if you've never reached out to ask me how i was okay bye there was a tweet of her saying that and you know, it's that's an angry bitch because if you're trying to get social media uh exposure and likes and all that shit but then you get mad because a celebrity writes mm -hmm. about you. That you used to fuck? Yeah. That, his, that his penis was in your butthole and your mouth? <laughs> and your vagina! That was the last place because it was the loosest. Anything? <laughs> you start small and work your way up. Tight asshole, big mouth, gaping hole. <laughs> that was the fish part of the blowfish. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. It's just like everybody just stop. Like gross. She's she's so gross. And I talked to other friends and said, Yeah, they're like, she's a junkie. I mean, I don't know her like that. God bless her. <laughs> she's she's cool. God bless you, bitch. But you jump back on the bandwagon a little too soon. Yeah. Maybe if, the, if, the, if these were your the friends, bodies. yeah, let, let the bodies cold. get cold. Yeah, you're... let them get cold. Wait till the funeral. You know, wait till the wake or something. Do something like that. Act like you're upset. Don't be like, yeah, I'm excited about Rams football kickoff. My friends died. But Fuck football's em. on. Yeah. Hashtag fentanyl. <laughs> oh, oh I can't. I can't. It's just so stupid. It's so stupid. Everything's stupid this week. Everything like this shit is hilarious. You think we have it bad in America with fucking idiots like Trump running for president and, and running this country into the ground. Boxer Senator Manny Pacquiao to run for Philippine president. 
he's been talking about this for a while. Um, and he used to, I, I guess he would donate a lot of money back when he would win, uh, you know, the boxing matches and stuff. He would donate a lot of the money back to betterment of his country. Mm-hmm. So on that part, I say good for him. Well, and, and the, so wasn't there other president, that fucking asshole that was just killing, like, you know, wiping yeah. people out and shit and crazy? If like you were caught with drugs, like just execution just shoot, yeah, on right the Yeah, right down the street. Yeah, right on the street. And I think Manny Pacquiao was not so much donating, but investing and buy, like making payments on buying that country back. How great would that be? <laughs> Pacquiao beans. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something I put on my burrito. <laughs> it's, I mean, here's the thing. It's not going to be the first time a punch drunk person ran a country. Get it? Punch drunk. Nothing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Christy punches. I'm drunk. It's the punch it's, drunk it's, show. And we love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, but that would be awesome if Senator. And then if, if he became president of the Philippines and there was some shit going down, instead of voting, they just have boxing matches. Whoever dukes yeah. it out gets the seat on the Senate. How great would that be? And like in it. this corner, weighing 87 pounds, <laughs> <laughs> King Lee Powell <laughs> versus in this corner, weighing 187 pounds, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do that here? Because I want to see Mitch McConnell in a pair of trunks. <laughs> I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. Um, him, Mitch McConnell, <laughs> and uh, Nancy Pelosi duking it out. Oh, oh, the I would touch myself. In the hair. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to fight there, see, because, you know, I can't even beat up an 87 year old woman. How do I expect her to beat up her? I mean, I mean, my wife kicks my ass, you know, because I have bruises, because, you know, she ties me up in the basement. <laughs> I'd pay money to watch that. His Dude, wife beat I... the shit out of him. Oh, I'd book it. I get merch rights. I get to sell merch. I'm the promoter, dude. <laughs> You're the Don King of turtles fights. <laughs> I can I have the wig too? Of course. Don King I, wig. That's the greatest hair in history. You'll look like Marge Simpson with that shit. Mm, Homer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kick your ass, Homer. <laughs> but good luck to Pacquiao, honey. I hope you win. I'll vote yeah. for you. I'll move to the Philippines just to vote for you, and then I'll come home. I, I, I heard for about 50 bucks you can do that. Shit, sign my black ass up, honey. <laughs> <laughs> the Philippines. <laughs> hey, is that Silver Lake in California? <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Oh, they all drove Honda Honda Civic CRXs that were lowered with the Calvin and Hobbes sticker. Yeah. <laughs> Hola. Anyway, speaking of unhinged psychopaths. <laughs> uh oh. Jim Brewer. <laughs> speaking of fentanyl. <laughs> Where's the fentanyl? Eyes. Why couldn't this guy get it? Jim Brewer has <laughs> come unhinged over the vaccination mandates in arenas and theaters and clubs. Do you think he lost a little sleep? Look at them fucking bags. It looks like he's going to the Philippines. Honey, he's got more bags than the guy on Canal Street selling them on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> His analogies make no sense. This guy's uh, not sleeping. You know, watch this clip right here. Thing you should be doing is going, hey, you want to come, you want to come see the, you know, like feeding the seal, the fish. Hey, you want to, yeah. you want to come see a concert? Ooh, 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 ooh. You want to, you want to, here, catch the fit. Why would you exactly. do that? Why would you, I don't want any of my fans forced to come laugh and they got to get a shot in them. And, and honestly, Tucker, I got to be honest with you. What really, what really started uh, my video was, there's a new narrative and the new narrative is 
the unvaccinated are the beast. Kill the beast. This this exactly. this program goes on forever. Exactly. Kill the beast. The beast is the unvaccinated. Kill them. And when when our leader put that out there and pointed the finger like we're the demons, I'm not vaccinated. I had COVID. You're not going to tell me about my body. I know. I I know my body. I know my morals. I know my faith. You don't come telling me and threaten me and everyone else as if we're the demons. I have two close friends right now, fully vaccinated, and they got COVID. Yeah. And they're both sick. So what is this is not about safety, because if it was, you just like you said, and I said in my video, eat more fruit, take care of your body, uh, yeah. go to the gym. I've been saying that forever. <laughs> they are beasts. Kill the beast. <laughs> okay. A, maybe if I overact, people won't notice I'm saying dumb shit. <laughs> I'm on Tucker Carlson. Tucker, you Tucker, you broader. <laughs> I'll be Tucker, you be Jim. Okay. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Wait, I need to. Here we go. Here's the bags under my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I broke character. <laughs> uh, how are you going somewhere? You're going on a trip. I see your bags are packed. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Girl, he's, he was up all night worrying about that interview. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Tucker with the hard hitting questions. <laughs> Trust fund, baby. He's the Jimmy Fallon of Fox. <laughs> God, Brewer, calm down. Oh, I had COVID and my friends are vaccinated and they got sick. Well, no shit, Sherlock. They didn't die, it doesn't though. Prevent, it doesn't prevent you from getting it. It keeps you from dying. God, well, I hate and people. I, and how it, many people that are vaccinated aren't getting sick? Like, that's the, the big thing. Like, it, it's... Oh, wow. I have one example of the, the billions of people out there. <laughs> <laughs> the goat. The goat boy. What does that stand for? The fucking... What is a G? <laughs> a bad word? <laughs> the, the, the gayest yeah. overactor of all time? <laughs> 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 ah, ah, ah. It's this? <laughs> the gayest actor today. So the gayest over actor of all time. <laughs> I can't like just shut up like with these people like like you're, <sighs> dude. I can't. I, I'd rather listen to Peabody and Sherman than. I love how crazy he gets, but he has two daughters that go to school, right? Yeah. You go to school, don't you need a, a, a vaccination? Mm -hmm. <gasps> They're taking his kids' rights. Hold on, <laughs> let me flop something around. They're yeah. doing this. They're taking the right. It's insane. How about that polio? You know? <laughs> How about that tuberculosis? How about that black plague? How about them measles, yo? Small yeah, exactly. Smallpox, what's up? Hey, is that related to Tupac? <laughs> <laughs> That's when Biggie and Tupac got back together that became smallpox. Good night. Folks, that's, that's my time. <laughs> that's if Kevin Hart started doing Tupac versus smallpox. <laughs> <sighs> Speaking of fucking uh, wish he had smallpox, <laughs> Eric Clapton plays Aww. venue with Vax mandate despite saying he wouldn't. <laughs> Yeah, take that, Jim Brewer. <laughs> uh, the question is, would you know his name? If, if, you, I, saw him if you would you take the jab <laughs> if I saw you at Smoothie King Center? <laughs> uh, oh, I can't. I can't. These people are fucking nuts. And, and the best part was is that he was so against it. But there was a loophole that made him decide to do it, which was called that he, the check <laughs> called the COVID test within 72 hours. <laughs> oh, you can take a test and come up negative. Oh, okay. Then I'll do and that's it. the loophole I'll do. So you, yeah, 
I need paid. You know what's less painful than the swab up the nose? The jab. <laughs> I, I cried when I got my first COVID test last year. That hurt like a motherfucker. Well, Eric needs the money because he needs to secure those screens in his windows. Yeah. Yeah. Here, kid, they're going to they're gonna make you vaccinate at five. I'm going to push you out the window so you don't have to. <laughs> Mandate. I can't. And he had that anti-lockdown song called, what was it, uh, Stand and Deliver? Oh. Oh, how about more like lay down and sleep to it? How about lay down and die or open a window <laughs> and jump? <laughs> Is that a Van Halen, Eric Clapton, son reference? I like it. <laughs> they open up their windows and jump. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> you to take the jab. Just jump. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't with these people. They're nuts. Like, God damn. Like, it's just so fucking funny to me. Just get over yourselves. It's, I mean, it, just to think that this all started because uh, Bill Gates wanted to put a microchip in our blood system and because uh, of 5G. Yo. Is that why all this started? Yeah, I mean, the 5G towers, I mean, I would kill for that microchip because my cell phone service would be so much better. Maybe my I, internet wouldn't crash every five minutes. My, my big problem with this is, is every, like, every step of the way, there's a giant conspiracy that is so stupid and ridiculous that it's like, hey, how about after the 30, 40th time you're wrong about something, maybe just start listening and maybe we can just get through this shit. Well, what it is, is conspiracies. People look for loopholes because they can't deal with what's reality right in front of them because there's nothing hidden. They do everything out in the open. Everything's wide open, but we're so dumb and delusional and and it's so far in denial that we can't deal with reality. So we've got to look around reality to find a loophole that fits our narrative so we can feel safe and not have to do anything about it. That's the deal. It's like, oh, reality is Halliburton, Dick Cheney's fucking company made billions of dollars off of that Iraq war that we didn't need to do 20 years ago, right? But yeah. no, oh, there's a conspiracy there, you know, so they're going to look around that. No, this is why we went to war because governments make make more money off of, of war, slavery and poverty. Those are the three big money makers for governments. Of course, we went to war with a country that had nothing to do with the towers coming down with the people that really did that. Of course. But no, they want to look around. Oh. Dude, this is why they did it. There was no conspiracy. It's the fact that Halliburton saw a money-making machine, just like World War II when Henry Ford sold all those tanks and cars and shit to Germany, that we could fight them. We sold them everything. We sold it's just it's such a huge money maker. It's it's a it's a bit it's this it's the first biggest money maker since the comedy festival. <laughs> if you can submit your tank fee to <laughs> yeah, $40. <laughs> Can we do a comedy festival? Let's do the Christy Unleashed Comedy Festival and charge people 50 bucks to do a six minute online thing. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Get over yourselves. But speaking of people who don't get over themselves. <laughs> oh boy. I know it's coming. Oh, big night, Sunday night. The Emmys 2021. Ta -da! I watched part of it and uh, hilarious, yeah. bad. And uh, they were talking about the biggest snubs and surprises of the night. For those of you who didn't watch, it was pretty uneventful, but it was, uh, so there were some parts that were great. I mean, the fact that Michael K. Williams, who we just lost, Omar, oh, Omar. oh legend just died also of fentanyl and his heroin don't mix your fentanyl and your heroin chocolate and peanut butter yes fentanyl and heroin or coke no but we lost a, a legend we lost a, an amazing human being michael k williams he was up for an emmy and lost <laughs> mm -mm 
You, that was his last shot, people, and you didn't even give it to him. Well, his last shot was. Oh, his fentanyl. second to last shot. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fucked up. I was like, oh, Michael's got this in the bag. They're going to do the Chadwick for him. They're going to hook him up. They're going to honor him with an Emmy. And boom, they just said, fuck you, junkie. We're giving it to the other guy. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> damn, <laughs> damn. But it was fucked up. It was fucked up. It was a pretty boring Emmys until, you know, I mean, uh, you know, but the, a, a really great thing about the Emmys is my queen, Miss Thing, Miss RuPaul breaks Emmys record for most wins by a black performer. Ooh, no, she better don't. I think this is a, a grooming process for him or her to take over late night to become more mainstream. This was totally, they knew who, they, 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 there was no surprises they, on the wins. They're, they're, they, listen, Hollywood is very calculated. The fact that he was subbing for Jimmy Kimmel while he was on vacation. Yeah. And now she's got the most wins. She's got what, 18 Emmys now? Oh, his uh, 11 since 2016. Well, it might as well be 18. And gay, and gay numbers 11 is 18. So let's just be real. And I live for RuPaul. I love her. I love that a black, 62-year-old black drag queen is crushing television now. She is working it out. I live. And I hate Michelle Visage because I want to be her. I want to be RuPaul's sidekick because I live for drag and I live for the gays. And I, that's like my dream job is to do this show. I want to host this show. One of them. When he said, I, I want to do it. I want to be the whatever. I have to be on the, the, the panel. That's my dream job. But the fact that she won the most, I live for it. And that red carpet, honey, look at this. Yes, that's Michelle Visage, RuPaul, Got Mick, and Simone, who Simone won this last season of Drag Race. And that queen is uh, she's so adorable. I want to fucking just gobble her up. And Got Mick is a trans man. She was a woman transitioned to a man. And she's also a big makeup artist in Hollywood. That face, that she is an she's an incredible performer, and I love her. Like it's just they're so talented, and this is the this is the next generation of late night. I love it, I love it. Bring it on, honey. Bring it on. Give me more rue, honey. The more rue, the better, bitch. But that was an amazing thing. But dun, 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 the greatest part of the Emmys, who should get an Emmy, goes to. Conan O'Brien. Ah, uh, Conan. Conan, Conan, Conan. Stole the show, the entire show. Let's cut to the clip. Please. Television has always been a... <laughs> Thank you, Conan. <laughs> Television has always been a place where we can come together and share our most valuable resource. <laughs> Stories. <laughs> like many of us in this room, I was kind of rooting for Conan, so this is bittersweet. Uh, thank you so much, Conan, for 30 years of inspiring comedy writers. A ridiculous number, you're the best. snubbed him for Fallon. Oh. Conan yeah. is the king. He should have been the next king of late night. Yeah. And Conan actually spoke to the generation when he was coming up and coming through. And like, I feel like Fallon didn't. No. He spoke to the younger generation that wasn't supposed to be watching late night. And it really like made it not late night anymore. It made it like a high school talent show. Yeah. 
well jimmy made it about him yeah like like this is my show and this is me and my friends like the inside jokes like this yeah. to me it reminds me of all hanging out with your boys or whatever and you're doing your I own inside jokes show, yeah where it's like 100. hey only four people are gonna get this bit because uh, we're gonna make fun of a teacher because, because we're so cool yeah and you're not in on the inside joke conan was the inside joke yeah and made everybody like he wanted you he was like carson he wanted yeah. you to shine carson would bring you out hi i'm a hundred yeah i know johnny carson <laughs> uh, but the fact is that he would make it about you and make you shine and, and conan just loved to be entertained where jimmy if there's gags going on he always has to step on it always has to reverse it back to him and it's just like no conan doing all that was so fucking hilarious that it, it wasn't like hey pay attention to me he was mocking the whole seriousness of this bullshit and it was so fucking great he is everything i love you conan <laughs> can i work for you <laughs> conan. i love conan he was my favorite since day one he's just the funniest dude on the planet just the greatest. He he should get a, he should totally get an Emmy for that. Yeah, it's hysterical. Love him. And uh, another Emmy nomination is our next story, or should be nominated for a daytime Emmy. The Today Show abruptly cuts to commercials after a streaker runs past the. St- how do you know? How do you know he was cut? They blurred it out. How do you know? You got unscramble vision. <laughs> but I they... love the idea that this guy, not only that he streaked in front of a TV studio, but where it is in Manhattan, where did this guy do this? Well, what's so funny is if you look at here, here's the video. There was this naked runner. Yeah. Well, I just had something is. brand new from Hoda Kotb. There he goes. is that security guy standing there just watching him because you know why it's new york city shit like that happens all the time nobody cares that was the third naked naked guy that saw this the security guy saw that day yeah and And it's the first one they noticed and the third one that went by it's like come on dude you know how much dick and ass i see on a daily basis from people you never want to see it from thank you so the fact that that, sec- that security guard is him, because he just stood there and just went, all right. <laughs> That's <laughs> New York you City. You tackle the naked guy? I'm no, no fuck no. I don't know what he's got. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> Delta. <laughs> that is a Delta. Oh, that was just like Delta coming through, bitches. <laughs> Look out. Six feet away, people. But that it's- was... <laughs> But that was so funny. That security guard is so New York. He's a true New Yorker because he just didn't even flinch. Yeah, That's when you that. know you're a New Yorker when shit like that doesn't even phase you. But it's so great. That guy deserve him and Conan deserve an Emmy for their brilliance. <laughs> that's now that's TV. <laughs> yes. That's good stuff. Oh, God. Well, speaking of uh, crazy bitches. Uh-oh. And Uh-oh. something and something that we all wish that Kate Quigley would have done. They look alike. Britney Spears suddenly deleted her Instagram. <laughs> oh, I thought it was the next story. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> She wanted to send a powerful message by deleting her Instagram. She's happy and in a great place. And the silence can be a powerful thing and a powerful message. 
this was her decision because she just needed to take a break and enjoy her life because now she's engaged. I'm just taking a little break from social media to celebrate my engagement. Be back soon. Two days later, Brittany's back on Instagram. Bitches can't be on social. <laughs> Bitches can't be on social. Yeah, you couldn't hit. You're in Hawaii with your new fiance who's banging it out and your dad is gone. You are free. The free Brittany movement has come to fruition. Like we succeeded. We got you out of your prison and you couldn't last 48 hours without Instagram. Like that's, that's how powerful this shit is that you can't go 48 hours without going on Instagram and posting. Like oh. you just can't live in the moment. Like that just shows, you know what though? That she was been in that prison cell for so long under her dad's thumb and not be able to do anything and have to report everything. That was probably her only outlet for all these years since what, 2008 or whatever it was when she got locked down by her dad and the conservatorship. So that was probably like, she feels free. And she probably felt like, oh my God, my arm's severed off. Well, I wish it was, because then you wouldn't have posted. Because you don't have a thumb. <laughs> <Nothing>. <laughs> I just don't, I, I don't know. I, um, I guess a different, this is why I don't belong in this uh, generation. I don't get why there's an addiction to this shit. You know I, why? I'll tell you why. Because you have a life. It's true. It's you true. Are, you're busy. You, you work five, six, seven nights a week doing stand-up, doing shows, podcasts. You have a family. You have a great wife. You have two beautiful sons. You have a doggy. You have a life. You have friends. Like, you do things out in the world. That's why you don't understand this. It's people like us that have nothing going on <laughs> that depend on some kind of stimulation. Please like me. What am I, Jay London? Please like me. You'll never... <laughs> see me again <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to sprinkle up the shit and we have a full cocktail <laughs> it's the Long Island iced tea of comics <laughs> you've been a good friend over the years Stella. <laughs> you'll never see me J. London Bachetti you'll never see me again because you've been a good friend over the years I'm going to leave you alone alright <laughs> and you didn't do both their tags thank you thank you <laughs> Which, okay here's, thank here's, here's, here's Bachetti's thank you here's J. London thank you very subtle it's kind of like the, the the queen sample of Eminem, uh, of Vanilla Ice, dun 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 dun. dun no, but mine dun, goes dun 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 dun. dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they should find it out who gets to keep it. Oh, celebrity death match. Oh, I would book that. <laughs> Can I have the merch? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, and uh. We love you both, Jay and Mike. If you're oh, watching, love oh, them. either of them have internet. Dude, my, yes, they, <laughs> they're not watching. Only one of them has a home. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of nut jobs, <laughs> who need to be in a home, Wendy Williams reportedly taken to hospital for mental health check. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Finally, finally. <laughs> I'll take no shit, Sherlock, for a hundred, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, imagine being the doctor. You don't like as soon as she walks in. I already have the report done. You can go home now. No, the doctor walks in and looks at her, and goes, "How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? How you doing?" <laughs> I just want you to know, I walk into the room, the kids will be in there, or Angie will be in there, and I come in and do my my impression of you doing that impression. I'm like, I'm like every single impersonator that just does Dana Carvey. I just do impressions of impressions. Of Christy Miller. <laughs> Christy Miller does an impression, I do that impression. The impression, of impression. That's like uh, my friend Eric Marino. Who was yeah. right on Saturday Night Live and Weeds and all that shit? He does. By the way, a friend of mine just worked with him and said he was amazing and wants him to come on drinks, jokes, and storytelling. Ah, 
He'd be great for that show because so Eric has a shitload of stories. Okay, I'll definitely because Eric has a shitload of stories. Yeah. But he doesn't have a computer, so maybe I'll have him come over here because he just lives on the next block. So I'll have Eric come over. And uh, but uh, Eric does an impression of Steve Renazizi doing an impression of Brody Stevens. That's where Eric's impression of Brody. <laughs> <laughs> but back to wendy williams so her she was supposed to come back on air september 20th was the debut of the new season she ain't coming back she's there they pushed it back to october 4th so she's done yeah. come on give give Here christy go. miller the show ah oh! but they still have to call it the wendy williams show i christy don't care i will be how you doing i will come out in a blonde wig Dress like E.T. With big when tits. E.T. wears the... Yep, yep. I'll put the, the blonde wig and I'll put big plastic tits in my shirt. I'll be like, how are you doing? But then what, <laughs> how am I going to hide all this ass? Because Wendy ain't got no ass. That's true. But uh, Wendy, we wish you health. But if anybody, if you want to step down and let me take the reins for you, girl. Please do. Please. And uh, our last story of the day, which is a feel-good story. <laughs> This is a feel real good story. This, this is, is a how you feeling story. How, how you feeling? This is this is like uh, this is a how you flying. This is this is the this is the trip Kate Quigley wished she had went on. <laughs> Dog caught tripping after eating a wild mushroom in a viral video. My dog ate a wild mushroom, and we just spent one hundred forty dollars for the vet to tell us she's high. Oh, I'm so jealous of this dog. Oh, how cute is he? <laughs> but you know what's sad is you got to be careful with that though, because that's how the Rock's dog died. What? The Rock had a French bulldog and ate <clears throat> wild mushrooms, and he went into total organ failure. His little dog Brutus. He was out in the, you know, all the land and he found wild mushrooms and ate some. And, you know, French bulldogs are just this big. Yeah. So that lab, Miley, the lab is bigger. Uh, so probably did the dose didn't affect her as much. But little Brutus went into total organ failure and, oh. uh, and, and suffered and got really sick. And it was so sad. He had to put him to, it was just like torturous because the dog, like he was a wreck. I, I was a wreck because, you know, my husband crying and a dog dying is just two things that are wrong. Two, That's <laughs> two, two things, things that are wrong. But Miley, on the other hand, was just tripping. Tripping hey, balls. Girl. Tripping, tripping, neutered balls. We're talking. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, this dog was hallucinating so bad it thought it had its balls back. Right? And she's a girl. <laughs> ah! Hey. Nobody is going to tell her how to identify. Yeah. <laughs> she was tripping balls like Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> and when I mean tripping balls, I mean they're so old and saggy because Caitlyn's 72 that she tripped over them. Nothing? <laughs> oh, what? <clears throat> oh. Miley, I hope you enjoyed the trip. We'll see you next fall. <laughs> yeah. Edit, see what I did there? Never mind. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of tripping dogs, my gizmo just walked through and fell over. <laughs> gizmo is like a little old gay man. He sashays into the room. Aww. And just gives me a look like. Where's my treat? Bitch? Where's my treat, bitch? You better hook a dog up, honey. <laughs> or it's Shakira, because his hips don't lie. He's 17 years old. Aw. Two Little years guy. younger than Wendy Williams. <laughs> <laughs> In dog years, sweetie. See what I did there? Oh, God. It's so cute. I love you. I love you. I'm Thank so you. happy to spend this, this time with you. I'm telling you, this is better than any Carol Burnett show. I'm so glad we had this time together. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I love you so much. Tell the kids uh, where you're going to be at. Uh, uh, this week, I have two shows uh, up near the Scranton area, um, the Big Top Lodge and the Scranton 
uh, I forget the name of the Saturday show. Uh, <laughs> but I uh, next week, the following week, on the 29th, I am going to be on West Side Comedy Club. We're doing a live taping of uh, Drinks, Jokes, and Storytelling. So I'm really hoping Miller's going to be there because we're all hoping you're going to be there because we all love you. Well, I will um, be there. And then the 28th, I will be in Gleason's, and that is in Levittown, Pennsylvania. Then the 30th and October 1st, I will be at the Artesian Theater in San Antonio, Texas. Oh, darling, that is simply top jewel. And uh, you guys can, for all more show information for Mark, you could go on his website at uh, uh, markrickadonna.com or follow him at markrickadonna on all the social media platforms. And uh, that's, uh, and for me uh, this week, I'm kind of laying low this week because I'm doing a lot of uh, post birthday dinners. So I've uh, jammed it in there and uh, I'm doing a little tiny show, a little hole in the wall with Howie Dewey on Thursday night at 8.30 at 15 Barrow Street. I love how we do. He's one of my favorite human oh, yeah. beings in the world and one of the funniest guys. So we're doing that. And then uh, next week I will be the 27th uh, Monday night at the house of brews at eight o'clock on 46th street. It's a really fun show. Uh, Glenn Cohen uh, runs that one. And uh, Wednesday night, I'm going to see Mark on the 29th at the West side. And then I have a midnight spot at the grizzly pair right after. So I should drag you with me down to the grizzly mm-hmm. pair. After I the think show. the whole crew should head down. Yes, let's do it. It'll be a night. And then, uh, you know, while Christy Unleash airs without us. And then, um, let's see, what's that? Uh, uh, there's uh, another. Oh, and you better be down October 7th at Parks Casino because I'm going to be with your boy Stevie Samoa. Oh, that's right. I'll, I'll be there. I'll come out. And then uh, next month is, uh, I forget what night it is, but we are at, uh, or is it November? No, it's not till November. We're doing Funny Women of a Certain Age and a bunch yes. of other stuff. So, but that's it. So, and here you can follow us here at Christy Unleashed on the Instagram. And you can follow me at Christy Miller Comedy on Instagram and my YouTube channel as well, where all my content is for past episodes of this is also on Gov's radio and my other show, Lunch Money and other stuff. So uh, we can see us here every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on the Governor's uh, Comedy Club Radio YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and we will see you motherfuckers next Wednesday, bitches. Bye. Bye. Thank you.